So I'm Tom, I am uh, Amy's husband. We both live in, in New Jersey and we find it really nice to bike over here. So as a part of the Vision Zero Cities Conference, we thought it'd be a really great idea to showcase some of the cool stuff happening on this side of the Hudson River. We're gonna see a lot of different types of projects, whether it's pedestrian safety focused or bike focused or place making or green infrastructure. We're very fortunate to have gone over five years without uh, a single traffic death in Hoboken. And, you know, there's a lot of work still to be done. We know that can change at any time. And so uh, we're making sure that we're not putting our pencils down and being happy with that progress. This section right here used to be parking. There's so much traffic here. When I say traffic, I mean mostly pedestrian traffic, people pushing strollers, people on bikes, jogger, that during peak periods in the evening when there's nice weather or on Saturday mornings, people will spill into the travel lane because there's no space. So we took out parking here for one weekend. We did it as a quick build pilot. We put up a little poster here. People could use a QR code or a website to vote on whether they liked it, they didn't like it, they want to keep it permanently or just during weekends or the summer. We received hundreds and hundreds of responses and overwhelmingly, I think it was like 75 or 80 percent of people wanted it to be permanent. One thing we're proud of is our relationship with Hudson County. And uh, actually we're on a county road right now, Hudson Street. And up there is Hudson Street and 14th Street. So the county is upgrading the traffic signals there right now. And because we have a complete streets program, uh, they've agreed to also build curb extensions into that project. You were able to wash on 14 and Hudson where we had a traffic signal upgrade. As part of that project, they also included four bump ups that are rain gardens. So green infrastructure, drainage improvements, streetscape, uh, and pedestrian safety improvements all in one. Mm. I love the daylighting. I live in a neighborhood up in the Heights where they had none of it, and it was literally terrifying to try and cross the street because you would inch out to try and see, and, the, and then the traffic was going so fast. It's, it's a stark difference walking from Hoboken and going just steps up the hill to the Heights. Yeah. They don't stop for pedestrians up there. The trash is a big problem, and but they're fixing it, you know, little by little. Now we're getting daylighting up there, and it makes a huge difference. They do a lot of that here. This town is very good about bump outs and uh, you know, it's like the uh, one, like, pedestrian treatments in general. Of... So right now we are on a fairly new curb extension. It's really large because of the angled parking that we have here. Uh, around 2013, where we are right now, was a painted curb extension. Uh, had vertical delineator posts around the edge. Uh, same thing for that corner over there. We partnered with the county. We got them to, uh, to pay for upgrading those curb extensions that were painted to the concrete that you see today. Uh, there's so many curb extensions in Hoboken. Every time they redo an intersection, basically, they put one in. They're just everywhere. We literally saw them being built as we passed by. It was amazing. New Jersey law is that you can't park within 25 feet of an intersection, and they actually enforce it, and everyone follows the rules. We have the same law in New York State, but New York City DOT has just decided we don't have to follow the rules. This is the intersection of 4th and Garden Street. That's an elementary school <laughs> and a park. And so again, this is somewhere where we prioritize a more significant pedestrian safety set of investments because of the proximity that we have here to these uh, two different land uses that attract the most vulnerable people in our community. The most significant investment right here on the school corner which is the curb extension rain gardens. Then we have a bike corral, which is probably the cheapest one right across the street. The plan is that every time we mail and pave a road, it's not just blacktop, it's also looking at all the users, the ADA ramps, can we include complete streets, bike lanes, in every intersection where we can, we add a bump out, if, if, if we can make it work with the turning radius. Oh yeah! It's the observer highway right here. It's the main arterial into uh, the southern part of Hoboken. Before 2015, this was a four-lane undivided highway with an adjacent service road. It was very hostile to any other form of transportation other than cars. We ended up making this a road diet. So now we have two lanes, one lane in each direction with a center turn lane and a two-way protected bikeway. And the brown section here is a pedestrian walkway. Before the four lanes yeah. undivided, that's what we've got everywhere. And that's where people are dying, you know? And if you had something like this, you could totally change the game. And then typically what Hoboken kind of pioneered and now Jersey City has adopted is then we upgraded to what's called a DuraBlend product, 
It's a polymer slurry cement. It's applied by hand. It's a very manual process. It's a little more expensive, but as a lot of people had mentioned, it's definitely a high friction surface. It's safer when it's wet and it lasts a really long time. So since 2019, uh, by the end of this year, Jersey City will have installed over 15 miles of protected bike lanes in a very short time. We're gonna get to see a lot of it today, different kinds of barrier elements, whether that's starting with delineators, then moving on to a product we call Tough Curb, and then Jersey barriers as well. Um, so we really are experimenting with it all. So this year, Jersey City installed over one mile of Jersey barriers along all of our protected bike lanes, wherever there's not parking adjacent to it. It's an important goal of the city to provide as much protection for cyclists as possible. Yeah, no one, no one's hitting me in their big old Ford F-350 when I'm in a lane with the Jersey barrier, right? Oh, it really makes a huge difference. And not all of them started that way. In fact, almost none of them started that way. They started with just the, the flex posts. And those, you know, are okay on certain certain contexts, but many of the roads where we have the protected bike lanes, they're, they're pretty scary without that hardening. So those have really opened up the, the bike lane network to folks who might not otherwise have biked on those streets because they're a lot more comfortable now. This was the first location where we piloted the use of Tough Curb. have definitely learned a lot about the pros and cons of it. We're still experimenting with the right amount of spacing. They're putting in the Tough Curbs where there's the flex posts, but they're on a, a bottom that's like little armadillos along the ground. So they're hardening that up too even when they don't have the uh, Jersey Barrier. Grand Street was a, a four lane section much like Observer Highway and a road diet was implemented leaving uh, space for protected bike lanes. But also here we had the opportunity to pilot some protected intersections. Uh, so they're a safer way for cyclists to be able to make left turns through the intersection, uh, give cyclists a space to queue while they're waiting for the, for, for the green light to proceed through the intersection. So what might be fun here is if like groups of, small groups of five or 10 wanna kinda just go through the protected intersection and just keep going in circles. It could be a, could be a fun filming opportunity. Grove Street which was the first protected bike lane that the city ever installed in 2019. Uh, it runs along our city hall. This is one of the streets that we have now gone back on with some EnduraBlend to upgrade again to that uh, longer lasting, higher durability, higher, uh, more friction resistant surface. So just this past summer, we upgraded the Washington uh, Avenue bike lanes, which are already super wide to have an Endura blend, highly durable uh, surface, as well as Jersey concrete barriers along the entire stretch. This is nice. This is, yeah, they, they did say they upgraded this, right? Yeah. New York doesn't have anything like that as far as the protection and the thickness of it and the quality of the surface. You mean like this? This is this, exactly, look at this. This is something you expect on an interstate highway, not, not on an urban bike lane. In the next month or two before it gets cold, there's going to be several more lanes going in as we just learned on this tour. So we're super excited and uh, we've already heard they're drawing up their wish list for uh, 2023. The Newark Ave Pedestrian Plaza was started in 2015. Uh, basically the city just put up some barriers and planters and closed the street to cars. Uh, had some leftover tennis court green paint and basically dumped that on the street. Uh, fast forward to 2019, the city started a design project for the full design permanent in installation of the Newark Ave Pedestrian Plaza. Construction was just finished this summer and, and the ribbon was cut. And uh, now you'll get to experience what's really a, become a great pedestrian public space. <laughs> so connections between Hoboken and Jersey City are strong. Um, however, they're not safe everywhere. Um, there's only five streets that connect the two cities, even though we are have contiguous borders. Marin Boulevard is one of those main streets. It has no bicycle facilities, and hundreds of pedestrians and cyclists use it every day to get between our, our transit hubs. But starting next week on Tuesday, we're going to be installing protected bike lanes on Marin Boulevard. Yeah.